Hey there. Um, thanks for joining. I just wanted to show you some of the benefits of using the RIP Band task cards to save you some time and energy and a little bit of overwhelm. Uh, one reason to use task cards is um, they kind of save you from having to dig around for the appropriate level of skills and practice that your kids might need. Um, I don't know about you, but when I look at the maps data on the NWA website, it gets a little overwhelming sometimes, especially when you see it all in content standard form. Um, you can, I know you can switch back and forth between common core standards and your um, topic, um, just so it's a generalization or the standards, but it still doesn't make it any easier about like trying to find the information that you need to teach the kids so that they learn that skill. So we're gonna go over a few of those things. Um, why you should use the RIP band levels that are, or the task cards that are in this, in this shop and how they can help you adjust your skill levels for your kids as they grow and how and change. And then um, another great benefit is because it's got all the topics all in one bundle. So if you buy RIP Band 181 through 190, it has numbers and operations, operations and algebraic thinking, I think the dog's at the door, um, measurement and data and geometry all in the same bundle. And it'll cover all the skills needed for that specific RIP Band. Okay, usually they're about 36 cards per, per bundle. Um, it's a lot of cards. Let me just show you really quick. If you were to purchase one bundle, you get this stack right here. That's This is RIP Band 171 through 180 for numbers and operations, geometry, algebraic thinking, and measurement and data, okay? So that's a lot of cards. What do you do with them? Well, I like to put them in uh, these iris cases, right? And separate them out based on the skill or the topic, okay? And then by the RIP Band number. And I've actually just created these covers to add to each band so that it's easier for you to store them. All of these little boxes actually go inside this big box, right? It's called the iris case, and you can either buy them clear or you can buy them in color. Um, happen to buy quite a few of these, kind of becoming a organizing box addict. Okay, so um, I keep all my math task cards in this, and then I can just pull out the right band I need when I need it, okay? Um, so that's storage, and then I'll show you my centers later. I actually did a quick video at school so I could show you how I organize my centers. Um, so when you're on the NWA website, I didn't, I didn't want to flip the screen back and forth, and there's personal information for the kids on there, so I actually just did this quick um, screenshot of it. And um, this would be when you first get onto the NWA website and select a student in their student profile, and it tells you... Um, what their what their writ range is for math. So like the student would be at 179. So she'd be working in the 171 to 180 and I would use the 181 to 190 to kind of bump her skills up a little bit. And then if you look down here, it says instructional areas that she needs to focus in are measurement and data. So I know with this kid, I need to start giving her more measurement and data practice. Okay, and if I click on that, it's gonna break it down even more and tell me, um, like the different standards and topics that are within measurement and data. So like this one says she needs to work on content um, one, measurement and data, C4, right? Okay, organize, represent, and interpret data with up to three categories. That gets a little overwhelming. So what I've done is I've gone through and all of these things that are needed for 171, I've just created task cards for. So then what I do is I actually um, write down my kids and a list of what my kids, and I'll, I'll do screenshots of this too because I don't know how well that's gonna show up. But um, I keep a list of my kids and then what writ band they're in so that I know what practice they need and then I can organize them based on group or group them based on their writ band and then those kids I know I can say, here, go practice in you know numbers and operations 181 or out of the green tub or however I wanna organize that, right? Go pick the square centers. Those are the ones you need to be working on today. But this helps me organize my kids and put five or six of them into the same grouping so that they can all be working on the same task, okay? Um, each set of writ band task cards also comes with like the layman's terms of the standards that are covered, right? Create sets with more than, less than, or the same number as given set of objects, and it tells you what's included inside of that center, or inside that rip band, sorry. 
it also comes with um, numbers and operations recording sheet, which this is what I throw in the centers. And I'll show you that in the drawer in a second. I throw these in the center so that the kids can do these independently or um, they can do them as a whole class or as a scoot. It doesn't matter. As long as they're, they're practicing these skills, you can find different ways to do that. I'm gonna show you an example of how I set up centers in my classroom. Um, you'll see this is my center rotation area and I've got two different bins. The left ones are covered with or have circle labels and the right ones have square labels so my kids know that circle is for reading and square is for math. Um, if we move closer, usually you would see their names on these. I've just turned them around backwards. So every day I actually um, just take the bottom one out, move it, hold on to it, move all of these down. And then when I get back up to the top, then I just put that top one up there where it goes. And that's how I rotate my kids through these centers every single day. Um, I only have 14 kids, so I just set up 14 centers so that we can all be working on centers at the same time where I can pull kids while others are working on centers. So that would be my reading and then my math. So they find their, num their name and their number, and then they come over here to the drawer and they find the matching number. Um, and then I put different things in there, such as my um, test prep math test cards. These ones would be for measurement and data, right? And they just take out the cards, the recording sheet, answer the cards on that recording sheet. And when they're done, they put it back here and the next day the next kid comes and does it. And I can store them in there two ways. I can either keep them in their iris box and put them in there with a recording sheet or paper, or um, I can do them freestanding like this one is. And then at the end of the month, I just rotate them out and we get new topics to work on and new skills and this way they can all be on centers at the same time or I can just have a few like as they're ready to move to centers they can come over and independently grab their own center and get started. So you can use it in different ways with your kids. Um, small group centers, whole group, task cards, uh, scoots, right? Um, and then I just wanted to show you the binder that I keep all my student data in. So I, I do this binder and I put the sheet in there with all of their rip band levels that they're currently at and then I can add, this is for my fall scoring, then I add my winter scores and then I add my spring scores. So just my way to keep track of my brain and then how I need to organize my kids to actually be practicing these. Um, the task cards work great just to meet the skills that they need for that grade level in general. So if you're looking at a 1-2 class or maybe even a 2-3, you're probably going to be working on skills 171 through 190-ish. And then third and fourth, they're between the 181 to 200, depending on your level of students. Some of them might even bump up into the 220s. And then um, fourth and fifth, they're kind of hitting that 200 to 230 range. Uh, so that's pretty much the task cards in a nutshell and how I use those to actually practice the skills that my students need based on their MAPS test data because when you go back in the back end of that NWA website and the student profile, it gets a little overwhelming. And the first couple of years that I was trying to dig through that data, I didn't even know where to start. I didn't know what to do or how to organize my thought process. So this is helping tremendously just because now I know what skills fit in each of those rip bands and I can pull a kid and look at their rip band really quick and then know which cards or which topics I can practice with them. And then I know what other resources to pull in as far as worksheets or other centers or my whole group instruction or whatever else I need to do with those kids. So that's that. If you have any questions, comments, go ahead and post them below or leave a comment on my blog, um, Facebook. See you around. Thanks.